most dating advice for women sucks because it centers on some gimmicky version of playing hard to get, texting the right phrase, or following stupid rules that don't make any sense, but continue to be followed out of fear, confusion, frustration, or let's face it, desperation. But what if you could learn what the 1% of women who are most desired by men do differently from 99% of all others that give them such an edge with men and a surplus of quality guys to choose from. If you are tired of running around in circles to attract your life partner and don't want to have to put out in order to attract commitment, this video is for you. I'm convinced that most women who are single could make a gigantic 180 degree shift if they change their mindset a little bit and express more of the truth of who they are to others. But before I share the six shifts, the differences between women who get all the attention, all the desire and the commitment from men and those who don't, I need you to know there's three major myths you need to break free from to fully embody this stances. And the first one is the myth of the supermodel. Most women believe at some level of the subconscious that they need to look in a very specific way in order to attract the desire and the pursuit for men. Yes, women who have a specific physique attract some interest and attention, but it's not sustainable long-term if the inspiration doesn't come from within. And as a prime example, you have women who are the life of the party and all guys want to connect with them when they're in their 20s and then 35 comes along or 40 comes along and there's crickets. Why? Because it was a superficial cosmetic connection and not really coming from within. Second myth you need to break free from is a myth of the sexual hypnosis. Mo many women believe that they need to metaphorically hypnotize a guy through connecting with sex and kind of get him and then the guy will continue connecting, pursuing and being inspired to commit. And I'm here to tell you that for most women, when you take the stance of sexually connecting with a guy early on without emotional connection, without compatibility, it's going to turn out into a sort of a shit show for you. <laughs> and I don't recommend it. I'm sharing this from the experience of having multiple clients who used to do it that way, changed to wait longer, including until exclusivity to have that sexual connection. And as a result of that, there was a genuine interest and pursuit. And when the connection sexually took place, finally, it was far more meaningful and the guy didn't run away. The guy wanted to stay and connect and go for more. The third myth that you need to break free from is the myth of it's not in the cards for me. Many women who haven't gotten what they want started thinking, maybe it's not in the cards for me. Let me give you an analogy. If you're following the wrong map and you arrive to the wrong destination, lo and behold, and you tell yourself, well, I guess it wasn't in the cards for me to experience Disney World. Well, no, change the map go to the right destination and you'll get what you want. Being in the cards for you, if you change your mindset, if you change your strategy, if you change the way you vet men, you can go from, I haven't gone the guy I want for a decade to finally getting men who are awesome and choosing the best fit for you to go all the way. Now, the first difference between the 1% of women who get all the sire and the 99% of women who are struggling to get it is they are a glass half full on their strengths instead of focusing on the things they don't have and comparing themselves to others. When you are someone who can focus primarily on the things you bring to the table, it doesn't mean that you don't focus on growing or changing and things that need to change, but you are primarily focused on that thing, that part of you that's shiny, that part of you that's exciting, that's part of you that's connected. And you connect with men from that strength, from that place of owning who you are, instead of focusing on what's missing and what's lacking, you know what to bring to the table, that connection creates a vastly different openness, different level of pursuit in men, because you know what you bring to the table, you know your worth. The second big difference between women who get all the attention and those who don't is they are self-ignited. Let me repeat this again. Self-ignited means that they bring light and fire and aliveness not because they're validated, not because the guy is saying you're beautiful, you're sexy, you're cool. Great if they say that. You can still feel awesome when a guy says you're beautiful, but they don't require that as a prerequisite for shining. They don't require for the guy to be in a great emotional state for them to show up in a great emotional state at the grocery store, on a date. What do you need to do if you want to really make a huge shift 
from crickets or lackluster interest to getting the strongest level of interest is figure out how you can deeply connect to that source of inner fire that makes everything that comes out of you far more inspiring, far more connected, and where you don't require the person in front of you to tell you something or share something with you to feel your beauty, to feel your uniqueness, to feel your worth. Shift number three, they love their body without obsessing about it. What does that mean? They're willing to take up space. They're willing to embrace whatever part of them is imperfect, knowing that that imperfection is beautiful to the right guy. They don't spend time obsessing about the one inch they need to lose or the one inch they need to gain. They know that they have something that's intrinsically beautiful that men who are of the right fit will really connect with. And with that level of confidence, with that level of self-assurance, with that level of embodying that sensuality, which is connected to their senses, they go out and they take up the right amount of space, not more, not less. They're not apologetic about their stance. When you show up that way, when you connect with that part of you that is beautiful and men will be inspired, men will be connected, and you won't have to apologize in stance or in essence for not being a different type of woman. Now, before I show the last of the differences, if you're a single woman watching this, I'd be willing to bet you're not fully aware of the root cause, not the symptom that's keeping you single. So what I've done is I've taken 13 years of helping women find love in every kind of challenge you can imagine, all walks of life, five different continents, and put it together in a simple quiz you can take in about six seconds that will reveal to you the number one reason you're still single. If you want to participate, all you have to do is go to the first link on the description of this video. You will see a page that looks like this. Answer a few simple questions, and in 60 seconds or so, you'll have the answer to the question, why you're still single, and also a custom report that will share with you the number one thing you can do starting today to reverse the trend you're on and attract the guy you want in a fraction of the time. The fourth difference is women who get all the desire know how to inspire openness in a man. And there's a couple of primary virtues that help them do this. The first one is non-judgment. Now, non-judgment doesn't mean that you're going to continue connecting with a guy who doesn't fit your standards or who's not the right type of guy for you. It just means that you don't look at him as less than. You don't get all hyped up because he's showing up differently than you think he should. You simply are willing to create the space for him to share the truth of who he is, for him to ask the right questions without forcing them, ask the right questions without judging him, and then be very present when you do this. You're not forcing, you're simply open to hear what he has to say because you're not judging. He's willing to share more. He's willing to be more vulnerable because you are vulnerable in return. It's a back and forth dance that creates high level of connection with a man where he feels safe to be himself. He feels safe to reveal himself to you. He feels safe to be seen and acknowledged and experienced, and so do you. That dance makes a gigantic shift between someone finding you interesting and someone finding you irresistible because it's something all men are craving and not every woman has the capacity or the willingness to go for. Number five, they don't take shit from men. And by that, I don't mean they don't have to go about shouting and slapping people metaphorically. They just have standards. They have values and standards and boundaries that when guys show up in a way that's disrespectful, that is not acknowledging what they need, they're able to share it. Here are my needs. Here's what I need going forward. It's not a do this or else. It's I'm happy if you do this. If you don't do this, I will move away from this. You, you don't have to threaten anyone. You just have a very clear stance of what you need in dating, what you need in connection, what you need in communication, what you need in intimacy for you to feel safe, for you to feel seen, for you to feel respected. And when guys don't show up that way, you give them a chance to step up. If they don't step up, you don't stay there hoping for the best, following a faulty strategy. You move on. You walk away from the situation and give the guy a chance to things in you that you feel are unworthy to be seen by others or that you feel might be judged by others or you feel might be too much for others. And those are the very things that the right guy is going to find appealing, irresistible, attractive, different. And if you shy away from that, if you shy away from expressing who you really are because you want to conform to some society norm 
that is making you more vanilla and plain and boring, then it's not a wonder that the right guys are not looking at you. They're just finding you not unique enough. And it's not because you're not unique enough, it's because you're hiding your uniqueness. So when you're willing to go all in on your strengths, your weirdness, your quirkness, your differences, and you know that that will make the right guys want you more, and the guys who are not a fit for you repel more from you, and it's okay, you don't have to have every guy want you, then you're free to be yourself. And as you are yourself, he will open up to be his true self as well. Hope this is helpful and useful and insightful. And if it is, it would mean the world to me and to my channel who grows as a result of your interactions. If you click like and subscribe, maybe share this with someone who might benefit from this. And if you wanna continue learning how to attract your ideal life partner without any for gimmicks, manipulation games or stupid techniques, make sure to watch the next video right here.